Welcome, 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 welcome back to 3D Boxing Live. Back with another edition of Quick Hits. It's good to be back. Bird just slanted. Okay. Uh, it is good to be back. Um, we're going to get into a, an interesting debate topic. Who is number one pound for pound after next weekend is all over? Is it Spence Crawford winner? Or is it in a way? Um, a Fulton winner, or, or is it still Usyk, who I have at number one right now? Um, it's an interesting question. We're going to break it down. Uh, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing blog, and all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Um, please also subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. All right, let's get into today's show. Let's get into today's show. Um, so we got two mega fights, and um, you know, the world will forget one of them right now, which is in a way um, Fulton, which is a really, really intriguing super fight uh, because we got this super fight of super fight Spence and Crawford. Um, I mean, this is a massive, massive. Fight is undisputed 147 pound four belt era. Uh, first time we'll have a welterweight 147 pound undisputed champ in the four belt, belt era. Um, but let's start off okay. So currently, I have in a way at two, Usyk at one. I got uh, Crawford and uh, Spence a little bit further down the list. Um, Obviously, the winner is going to take a big jump up. Um, I, I, my guess is, in 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 the court of public opinion, Spence Crawford winner will be number one. Um, but I, I want to ask this: um, it, let, Let's say Inouye wins. Let's say let, let's all off what, what what Fulton wins. If Fulton wins, um. He's got he, he he retains his belt. He's got the WBC and WBO. Um, he he'll have wins over pound for pound number two in a way. Does he go to number one? Wins over Roman, Brandon Figueroa, Angelo Leo, Arnold K guy, Isaac Avalar. Um, he's got he'll have wins over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> He'll have wins over 11 unbeaten fighters if he wins. It's hard not to make the case that he's going to be number one if he knocks off the number two guy. Does that put him ahead of Usyk? Mm. He still has only done it in one weight class. I'll tell you who it does put him ahead of, Errol Spence. If Errol Spence wins all these belts, um, Boy, this is going to be tough. You know, I just said that, and then if Errol Spence gets all the belts, he still hasn't beat anyone bigger than him. Um, neither has Fulton. Well, he's beat, he's got a win over Figueroa, which I don't think he deserves, but he did get the win. Uh, this is going to be close. I mean, splitting these guys. The problem I have with uh, putting Spence up there is the inactivity, okay? I think there's a real good case. Should Fulton win, that Fulton goes number one. If Inouye wins, uh, he is number one. Um, he starts at 108. Went to 115, 118, 122. He skipped 112 because there wasn't a lot there at that time. 108, 105. I, 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 108, 115, 122. 108, yeah, 108, 115, 118, 122. 
it's hard to put him at number one. The drawback on him is because he skipped over 115, which was the most talent loaded division. He didn't fight um, Josh. He didn't fight Rung Vasai. He didn't fight Quadras. He didn't fight Chocolatito. He didn't fight Estrada. But he's done it in multiple weight classes. And now, at the age of 30, he's fighting a guy way bigger than him who's too big for him. If he wins, he's got a claim because he was able to go up and down the weight classes, um, up and down the weight classes, and beat a guy much bigger than him. That's his claim. Um, the drawback is he was at 115, which was the most loaded division in the sport from a talent perspective, uh, and he missed most of the top fighters. That's an unforgivable sin. Um, he, he should have fought Chocolatito. He should have fought Quadras. He should have fought uh, Estrada. He should have fought Ioka. He didn't fight any of those guys. Josh Franco, Bam Rodriguez, missed all those guys. All right, let's go to the welterweight fight. My, my drawback on these guys, I'm going to give you my conclusion at the end. Um, Errol Spence, 28-0, obviously 22 knockouts. Here's my issue. He'll have the best resume. Ugas, Garcia, Porter, Kelbrook, Mikey Garcia. Uh... Lamont Peterson will put in the mix, too. That's one, two, three, four, five, six quality wins over six-plus years. It's one quality win a year, which isn't terrible. Um, the, the, the problem is, since the pandemic, he's fought twice. Garcia, Ugas. Two good wins, two really good wins. Is that enough? Is three wins in four years, basically, right? Is three wins in four years enough to make you the number one? He's got the best resume. When you go through it, he's got it. Right? But we're just going over a long period of time. The Porter fight was almost four years ago. Since... 2019, 20, 21, 22, and 23, he's got two wins so far. Ugas and Danny Garcia. He fought uh, Sean Porter in September of, uh, 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 of 2019. Okay. 15 months later, he came back and fought Danny Garcia. 16 months later, he fought Ugas. I mean, these are massive gaps, guys. 15 months, 16 months. Now we're 14, uh, fi another 15 months. He's fighting once every year and a quarter is basically what he's doing. Can a guy like that be the number one pound for pound fighter in the world? That's the knock against him. Now let's go to Crawford. Crawford. Moved up the weight classes like in a way. Also skipped over. Uh, you know, he didn't fight. Didn't fight Danny. Didn't fight Keith. Didn't fight Pacquiao. Didn't fight Verge. Didn't fight Boots. He fought Porter and Spence. Does a win there make him number one? He's got he's gone up and down the weight class, but his resume is not as good as anyways. Right? He skipped the, the a talented weight class. Um, but he, he'll go back and have gotten two of the top six, seven guys. Uh, but his names are bad. David Avenusian, that does nothing for a pound for pound. Um Cal Brook, that does nothing. Mean Machine, that does nothing. Amir Khan, that does nothing. Jose Benavides, that does nothing. Uh, Ndongo is a good win. Felix Diaz, John Molina. These names do absolutely nothing. We're going back seven years. And over seven years, his best name is Sean Porter. Good name. Other than that, Jeff Horn's the next best name on the list. Thirty nine and zero. When he'll get him to 40, he's going to be in the top two or three if he wins. 
Does that get him to number one? A win over Spence. So the resume would be Spence, Porter, Ndongo, Jeff Horn, Victor Postal, and then we're going all the way back. If you want to go back to Beltran and Gamboa, that's almost a decade ago. Is that a pound for pound number one resume? Right. So the, the upside is he's 40 and 0. That would be 35, 40, 47. It becomes undisputed in his third weight class. But he's the name, it's it, it's it's the worst of the four resumes. Should they win? My inkling is if in a way wins, he's number one. If anyone else wins, I don't think they jump Usyk. I really don't. I, I, I Fulton needs to either be undisputed or win another belt in another weight class. Spence needs to win a belt in another weight class. Look, because Usyk already became undisputed at cruiserweight, right? Then he won three more belts at 54. If Spence went up to 54 and beat Jamel Charlo twice, he'd be a number one pound for pound guy, right? That's, in essence, what Usyk did. Now, Usyk can't get a fight with Fury because Fury's ducking him, right? So I would still have Usyk. If, 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 if Fulton wins and Spence wins, I would have Usyk won. Um, Spence, two. Fulton, three. If Inouye wins, I'd have Inouye one. Usyk, two. And then the winner of Spence Crawford, three. Uh, if Crawford wins, uh, he gets to number two, I think. If Crawford wins and, and in a way wins, he's three. The, the, it, there's not – his resume is so bad. It, 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 it's hard, right? He's got the accolades, right? But he, he doesn't have the wins. Por, uh, Porter – Spence, and then we're going back almost a day. Horn, it's not a pound for pound number one resume. It's not. I, I can't see him getting above three. I can't see it. I I, I, I guess I, I'd put him above Mel. I, I'd probably put him at three. Crawford's the one guy who definitely I don't think can get to number one on my list. Now, if Usyk loses to Dubois, which I don't see happening, all bets are off. But the only guy I think gets to number one if he wins. The only guy that jumps Usyk if he wins is Inouye. I think Fulton goes to two. I think Spence goes to two. And Crawford, Crawford's going to be behind the winner. No matter who it is, Crawford's behind the winner of Inouye. Look, Inouye was able to jump up the weight classes and has more good names. He was also undisputed. If Fulton beats him, Fulton's got a win over Inouye. The win over Inouye and the recent resume is better than what Crawford has. Crawford has a win over Spence and nothing else. He doesn't have a win over a Figueroa or an Angel Leo. He doesn't have a name like that. A young guy in his prime, he has nothing like that. Um, let me know what you guys think. Who will you put at number one on your pound for pound list when this week is over? I'll leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing blog. Quick hits comes out. Uh, every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. It's July 20th, 2023, from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside 